In a typical year, we're often not faced with questions of whether the vote we cast will preserve democracy or put us at risk. But this year we are. So the president is talking about, I mean, his major thrust of his speech last night was democracy itself. Let's take a look at this headline that brings home a finer point. Biden in our bones, we know democracy is at risk. So Biden's speech was a closing argument for Democrats who face an uphill battle in the election next week. While the race for the Senate remains a toss up, the House is forecast to flip in favor of the Republicans. 270 to win is predicting that the Republicans will in fact take back the House. Take a look at this map and this is what they are forecasting 223 Republicans to 200 Democrats. So there is a lot on the line. Now in the president's speech, he struck a familiar tone and this is coming from a political article. It was a familiar tone from the president who has warned about threats to democracy before. But with the midterms just days away, it took a sharper tone, a sharper note. Biden blamed his predecessor, Donald Trump, for stoking division in the country and breeding election denialism. And he warned that election denying Trump acolytes were quote, running for every level of office in America, end quote. Let's watch this as President Biden calls out President Trump, big lie. You know, American democracy is under attack because the defeated former president of the United States refuses to accept the results of the 2020 election. He refuses to accept the will of the people. He refuses to accept the fact that he lost. He has abused his power and put the loyalty to himself before loyalty to the Constitution. And he's made a big lie, an article of faith in the MAGA Republican Party. The president is is exactly correct on that. Uh, President Donald Trump is in total denial. He has certainly stoked the flames of more hatred. There is a lot bubbling underneath, really deep in this country. And Mr. Trump brought all of that stuff up to the surface. Now in the president's speech, he barely talked about the economy. And the economy, according to the people, the number one thing on their minds. Let's look at this graph here that shows that very, very clearly. That the top issue driving voters decision for the 2022 midterm elections is in fact the economy. Ray, I wonder why the president did not talk more about the economy, why he didn't thread the two together, both the clear and present danger that today's Republicans represent to our democracy that Trump helped to cement, unfortunately, but also recognizing the the deep pain that people are feeling in their pocketbook and wallet. Absolutely, he could have really seamlessly tied those two issues together because you're talking about the you know the very real issue of Trump pretending that he won the election despite losing by millions and millions of votes, with how he was harmful to workers, and that is the nexus right between the the economy and Trump because you know we are at a time where people are really struggling and because Biden is the president, they're going to pin that squarely on him. But he could talk about the massive tax breaks Trump gave to the uber wealthy in this country and and how little he did for the working poor, the working class. And that is, like you mentioned, the number one issue for voters in this election. And it just felt out of touch. Honestly, I don't usually tune into the president's speeches. I catch the highlights afterwards, but I had my fingers crossed, my all my fingers and my toes crossed that this was gonna be a November surprise, not even an October surprise, a November surprise to help push the Democrats through. Maybe some sort of relief checks because people are still hurting. COVID is still happening. We still need those checks and he owes us some money. That was promised to us, or any sort of relief, you know, the government subsidizing individuals who need to buy gas because gas prices are high, things like that. I mean, I live in Chicago, I actually just got a gift card from the city to help pay for, for gas, which has been a huge, wonderful surprise for me and a lot of very helpful to a lot of Chicago. And so I was hoping he would announce some sort of program like that, something tangible that people could really feel the effects of. And it's important to talk about the attacks on our democracy and that really plays well with the democratic base. 
But you're always going to play well with the Democratic base. You have to get the people who are less likely to vote to the polls. And the way you do that is by providing them with relief. And he didn't do that. He didn't even allude to that. So, you know, it could have been a lot better. Yeah, absolutely. And there were other advisors, you know, people around the president who really wanted him to focus more on the economy. And there was a way for him to do both, Ray, as we are both stating here. If you want to talk about the threat to democracy and today's Republican, and this is no exaggeration here, they are a threat to democracy. You talk about that and how it is linked to the power that you give people when you elect them to office. So if you care about the child tax credits, you know, if you care about increasing the minimum wage, which I kind of say that with an asterisk hooray, because the, the Democrats need to do a better job. The federal minimum wage is still at $7.25. It needs to increase to minimum of $15. And if the minimum wage was increased, keeping up with inflation, it would really be closer to $25 than it even is the 15. But let's just go out on a limb and start with $15 an hour. You link that to the fact that the Republicans have already made it very clear, crystal clear, that if they get the power, they are going to push to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. That is part of the democracy conversation. You recognize the pain that people are feeling and not just pretend like it is not happening just because you are in election. See, right? That's the stuff that people are upset about. They, they tired of the illusion kind of stuff. Democrats are doing everything right. No, Democrats are not doing everything right. They're not fighting hard enough. But the, 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 the biggest danger right now, right now, because we'll deal with the Democrats. Let's get them in there and deal with them. We got to deal with neo fascism first because it kills quickly. We can deal with neoliberalism once they get in, but he did not address those economic pains that people are feeling. And I think it really is going to hurt Democrats in the end, which ultimately hurts the people in this country. Let's stop centering politicians. Let's start centering the people. And if Democrats don't go hard in the pain, if they don't go ham on these Republicans, if they don't show what they can do and will do to change material conditions in this country, we're gonna keep having this seesaw that's going on right now in the election cycles. It's a seesaw. I mean, who in their right minds would put these Republicans back in control? The last time I checked, there are Republican citizens of this country, Republican people in this nation who need Social Security. The last time I checked, there are poor Republicans who could use a minimum wage increase. The last time I checked, there are Republicans who could use universal health care. So this is not a partisan issue here. This is a working class issue. This is about the working class, this is about the poor. And unless you got a sugar mama or sugar daddy, or sugar something, you part of the working class. Now, some of us may be at the top of that, some in the middle, some at the very very bottom. But if you can't afford to take weeks and months and years off from work, you are in the working class. And the GOP across this country are doing everything that they can to hurt the working people of this country, to hurt poor people in this country. And for the life of me, I don't understand why anybody would vote for them. They gotta go.